Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. Today, a pencil review, and um, you know, probably the one of the most iconic American school pencils uh, of all time. Uh, unfortunately, they are not made in the America anymore, in the United States. But um, I can't believe I haven't done a, um, a video about the Dixon Ticonderoga. Uh, I may have the maybe the number one and some of the kind of limited edition or special edition, the black, uh, the metallic, uh, different ones, um, the colors. But um, this is very much the standard issue Ticonderoga. And believe it or not, the stores now, we're halfway through summer and the stores are starting to fill up with school supplies. And I found these at my local Kroger and check this out. A dollar nineteen for this entire package of twenty-four pencils. Now how was I not gonna get these for a dollar nineteen? Uh they were on clearance for whatever reason. Um Maybe these were from last year, leftovers. I don't know, they didn't sell. But uh, it was the only pack that they had. I would have bought more otherwise, um, just to have around. But uh, here we are uh, with the 24 pack of Dixon Ticonderoga. And you'll see they're all sort of neatly lined up in a clear, um, kind of plastic, lucite, thin, uh, well, I'm not sure what this material is, um, package. And they have on the front, uh, and I think they're still using this, uh, celebrating over 100 years of excellence. And uh, 13924 Ticonderoga, the world's best pencil. That's a big claim. Uh, and then 24, number two HB, premium wood, latex-free eraser, made in China. So, so there are some Ticonderogas that are made in Mexico. These are the Chinese variety. Um, again, it's a completely see-through package. Flipping over, uh, we have a little thing here, also the celebrating 100 years, kids in need, the Pencil Makers Association seal, um, Dixon Ticonderoga Company, a Fila Company, and the rest is kind of covered over with the price sticker and made in China at the bottom. The price sticker said that these were for 99 for the two dozen initially at least that was the Kroger price that's what they were selling them for five bucks uh, for two dozen um, but premium wood so we'll see let's flip it this way and we can kind of get a closer look at these Ticonderoga cores um, well, there's a few that look to be spot on center, and then there is a few, here's one right here, that's really quite off center. Um, and this one's a little off center. So I would say they're not all perfect. Um, that one's a little off, but most of them are fairly centered. Uh, so, we will uh, take a look. Let's open this up here. It looks like there's a flap here. We can, I'm just going to randomly slide one out. Okay, let's look at this pencil. We will start at the eraser. It's got the pink eraser. Uh, it's still very soft, very pliable. Um, the iconic ferrule 
um, and you may or may not be a Ticonderoga user, but a couple things I think you have to consider. This is really a nice looking feral when so many of the standard pencils just have kind of that common silver or gold tone feral. Here you have one with green, with yellow stripes, and by the way, glued on, not crimped on. Uh, so as an example, here's a, here's a golden bear, which actually has a very nice ferrule too, but um, you can see that, that the eraser is crimped and the ferrule is crimped to the barrel of the pencil. You can see where that is done. There are no such markings on the Ticonderoga because they glue them in rather than crimp them on. So, okay, here's a pen and gear pencil. So here's the Walmart yellow pencil uh, made in India. But you'll see a uh, different eraser, but that ferrule that you see everywhere uh, are very common on kind of everyday school pencils, office pencils. So you kind of, you know, can appreciate the Ticonderoga's really beautiful uh, green ferrule. Uh, soft, HB, two, and they put the two in a hexagonal shape. So you understand that this is not a round pencil and it's not, it's a semi-hex. And then, Dixon Ticonderoga. Uh, the imprints are in green foil. You know, overall an okay paint job. There's no runs or anything uh, on the, uh, the tip end, the writing end, or um, no splintered paint around where the ferrule is attached. And, you know, that's the pencil. So our next job is to sharpen it and to do a little writing. Okay, I've got it, whoop, I've got it sharpened up here and sharpened up nicely. Um, it's not a, not a cedar wood pencil, certainly doesn't smell like it, but the wood is, is fine and it sharpened very easily and nicely and we will write with it. Mm -hmm. Not a super dark number two, um, a little bit scratchy, perhaps you can hear it. There is some resistance. Um, I don't know that I would have to say it's the world's best pencil. It's certainly okay. Um, and honestly, it's not the same Ticonderoga pencil that I remember from my childhood. Yeah, a little bit light.
Okay, let's do a couple of things here. First, let's see how this... Okay, not a lot of smudge here. Uh, so I would say for a lefty, uh, I think you would find that you would not get a lot of drag uh, from the graphite on the paper here. Doesn't seem to smudge a lot. And I'm going to do some erasing and I'm going to start with the attached eraser. Which, um, hey, you know what? That's decent. That's a decent erase job right there. Um, we'll try some block erasers on the, the marks as well. See how they do. A Pentel, pretty good. Mars, very good. Um, here's a Dixon Pink Pearl, or Pink Carnation, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, um, not a Raj. This pencil is erasing pretty nicely, Alon. Um, where's my art gum? Gum eraser. Uh-huh. A rubber eraser here. Hartmuth. And, um, what else can we try? How about a Mr. Pen? Okay. Well, uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm impressed not only from the job that all the erasers did, but the job of the attached eraser. I'll give it an A in erasability. This is a more, one of the more erasable pencils, eraser-friendly pencils, I think, I've tried of late. So, that's good. I think perhaps it has something to do with the formulation of the core and the fact that um, it is a bit of a lighter um, and a bit of a harder number two. So, let's try some more writing. Really comfortable pencil to hold.
Well, I would say just, you know, personal preference is a pencil that is a tad softer, a tad darker, um, but for, like I said, this would be a good pencil for a left, left-handed writer. Uh, it's a decent enough overall school and office pencil. Point retention is quite good. Again, I think we're seeing the characteristics of a core of a number two, but really a number two that is um, on the number two spectrum, really more on the uh, firmer, harder side. It does, the pencil does have a little scratchiness. You do get that feedback as it moves across the paper. Uh, some people really like that, um, and I like some of that. I think this might be more than I would like in a regular writing pencil for myself. Um, but uh, for general office use, and school use. I think that the Chinese-made Dixon Ticonderoga is a good pencil. I don't know that um, it's any uh, more superior than, say, a Walmart pen and gear pencil, which is made in India, uh, which is also a number two. I don't think it erase, I don't think the pen and gear erases as well. Um, but the the pen and gear pencil is actually a tad smoother and darker. And that may be attributable to its Indian heritage. I'm not sure. But as far as the Ticonderoga is concerned, certainly a good bargain at $1.19 for two dozen pencils. And, um, you know, uh, bring these to uh, a student and I think they would get good use out of them um, and uh, it's always nice to see these iconic brands still going strong. Um, I wish they were uh, made here in America because they are such an iconic American pencil, uh, but you will find these virtually everywhere pencils are sold, I would dare say. So thank you for being a part of this review. If you like what I do here, please share, like, and subscribe. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you again soon here on Always Analog.